So what I have for you today is uh, the first of many ridiculous websites we're going to cover over um, some span of time. And I wanted something that's quite good to ease into. What we're going to be reading today is something that's known as the Sonic OCFC Wiki. Now, what that actually stands for is the Sonic Fan Character or Original Character Wiki. To describe what people do here, it's 10-year-olds, 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds come in and, um, you know, they're not diagnosed on the autistic spectrum yet, so they have free reign of the internet, and uh, they they really love Sonic the Hedgehog because they, they can bond with a hedgehog that goes quickly, and they make their own lifeless, two-dimensional fan characters, which are actually uh, Mary Sue's that are inserts of themselves. And they're all really powerful and smart. Their parents, you know, they, they saw them. They, they, they decided to give in, get, got, them, got them access to the internet and everything. Yeah. The child was always a little special. You know, that it was, was just, special. Special is one of the word. Just a, just a strange kid. Spectrum is a better word. <laughs> he was on the special spectrum. <laughs> and he was... These, these people, you know, they, they looked at Sonic... And what better universe to be in than a universe filled with anthropomorphic uh, hedgehogs? If you will go to the front page, so it says, Welcome to the Sonic Fan Characters Wiki. And uh, there's two sections under that, notices and updates. And in notices, you have uh, three subsections. Short pages, updates and the rules reminder, suicide and negativity. <laughs> okay. That's a little out of left field. Yeah. Just, yeah. you know, gonna, just gonna throw it out there, you know, all the happy stuff, and then, you know, but don't, don't, don't forget, suicide and negativity is a real issue. Uh, because in, in essence, uh, there's people who have mocked stuff on this site before, and that led to people threatening to take down their characters, then taking down their characters then threatening to cut their wrists, and then cutting their wrists, even though the characters are already taken down. Oh, wow. So, welcome to the hodgepodge that is this place. And I'm going to give you (laughs) something to read. Okay. This is Charlotte the Rabbit, uh, who incorrectly inserted an image so it glitched out, and now she has no image. So you can go read her bio. Look, Alec, I'm gonna I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be real here. You're putting a lot of uh, a lot of pressure on me right now. You go, oh yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be making fun of stupid shit on the internet. By the way, people kill themselves. Have fun. Well, well, no, they didn't kill themselves. They just uh, let's say uh, raked their lawn, or so to speak. Yeah, if the lawn is their wrists, remember, kids, up the street. No, it's, it's down the street, not across the river. I thought. Oh yeah, there we go. Well, maybe I'm I'm probably getting that wrong. It's been so long since I cut myself go into on. pieces. Well, you know, go it's on. always it's always a last resort. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> and by the way, you have to read this literally. All right. <clears throat> so so if it were misspellings, you got to read that out. All right, I, I got this. I got this. Okay, introducing Charlotte the Rabbit. Charlotte, who prefers to be called Shah, was a shadow clone created by the same scientist who created Nami. Throughout his life, he remained anonymous. Uh, anom- on- anonymous. Oh, oh my god, yes, you're right. <laughs> An- anonymous. <laughs> anonymous. In- Name, Charlotte, Shah. Age, ageless, always a Agless. cop-out. No, Agless, no, that's not, that's oh, not god. ageless. Oh god, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you gotta be on the lookout for this. You are, you are a lot better at this than I am. I see I see the word. I automatically correct it in my head. Yeah, that's the, that's the difficulty of being an editorial man. All right, all right. So name, Charlotte or Shah. Age, Agless. Uh, physically 12, but it's only been alive for three years, so it's always pedophilia. <laughs> uh, gender, female, of course. Uh, species, rabbit. Relatives. Shadow, considered brother. Theme. 
Perfect Enemy by Tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They even have alignment. No, it's not alignment. It's oh, not alignment. Alignment. No, alignment. Alignment. Oh, jeez. They have alignments. That is... This is getting into D&D territory. We should D&D as these characters. <laughs> the deepest bios. Uh, quotes. What happened? No, that's not quotes. It's oh, quotes. Cool. Quotes. <laughs> is it? Qu- uh, Q-O-R-S. Uh, so, of course, her most common phrase. Uh, Whatever. Whatever. Why would I work with a robot who's programmed to kill? Or at least permanently damage my biological brother. He's like a father to me. So this character, I can I can already imagine the scenarios. This character is very down to earth. It's quite cynical, a little bit pessimistic. Uh, looks at life and sees the ending coming. <laughs> as the blade gets closer. No, no, hold on. Wait. We weren't going to we weren't going to do that. Remember. <laughs> So, okay, the, the fresh hell is starting. Number two. <clears throat> okay, one second. I need to find something. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. This is uh, a little intense, and I made uh, a promise to myself that I was, uh, I was gonna, I was gonna quit smoking today. But, uh... No, nope. <laughs> Oh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna take this one. I'm gonna take this one because the next one is so horrifically bad that <laughs> that you are going to probably just choke. Okay, so you get you get Mora the Swallow. Oh, I'm so I'm sure she does. <laughs> she got that name just not because of her species. Mora was raised by an evil family. Her brother enjoys stealing. Her mother enjoyed murdering. Her father enjoyed kidnapping for stuff. Mora wasn't really evil, though she enjoyed reading books. Any books. It is the reason why she is so smart and tricky. When Mora just turned 13, her father was arrested and killed in jail. (laughs) Okay. Even though her father was evil, she loved him very much and was heartbroken when she heard from her father. Um. Wait, what? He's dead. How do you hear from your father when he's dead? Uh, Daughter! All right, well... I am the dead! (laughs) Something changed in Mora that day. In memory of her father, she will kidnap for the rest of her life. It's it's good to know, you know, the family uh, profession (laughs) sticks around. You know. My dad was a plumber, so... (laughs) When Mora turned 14, she she joined a special school for kidnapping. (laughs) All these vocational schools... At first, she wasn't good at it. In fact, they used her for explamy to teach the others. During the years, she went. She kept reading books to help her. She learned to teleport and to tie things. Okay, I'm just gonna straight up say, if I knew, if I learned how to teleport from kidnapping school, I wouldn't be kidnapping people. I would just be getting money. Yeah, exactly. Just break into banks, for God's sakes. Yeah, yeah, these, these. The problem with Sonic characters is, like, they're incredibly powerful, and they're still, like, poor as shit because they're just retarded. I mean, shit, you could monetize these powers pretty easily. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, anyway. Amora later graduated from school when she was 17, almost four years of going to school. Amora felt proud and knew her father would be too if he wasn't dead. She looked for her first hostage. She chewed and kidnapped Sonic, but later he got away. Mora was determined to keep kidnapping. Nah, see, that's that's where the mistake was. Shouldn't have kid- tried to kidnap the main character. Try and kidnap yeah. an OC character. And Whoa, don't tell them. There's there's more. There's like an older uh, bio she had. Oh, also, you should look at the picture at the bottom left. That's uh, her kidnapping. Whoa. And, uh, <laughs> you know the, the bottom left picture? Um... <laughs> In any other context, I would think that this is like a KKK lynching fan art. <laughs> just just, just uh, do a paint fill on that Sonic. Fill him with black. Hey, you, you better be careful or else I will skirk all over your face. Well, okay, Morrison. Because now that I read that piece of shit, it's time for your suffering. Oh, goody! 
And you were telling me that they don't have well-developed characters. So here it is. All right. Here it is. Fucking Terminus. <laughs> Night of Endings. <laughs> now you can enjoy whatever the fuck this is that I found ages ago. All right. I'm looking. I'm looking okay. forward to this. <laughs> and this is essentially like a, a fucking character sheet for D&D. Oh, my God. Okay. I'm going to go through the little side. Side, yeah, yeah. side channel side first. Panel first. Uh, Terminus, end of the uh, night of the end, not end of the night. Uh, <laughs> his height is four foot seven inches with the armor on. Jesus Christ, three hundred. No, seven foot four inches. <laughs> oh, did I say you four foot seven? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the average height of a Sonic character. So this guy is a fucking giant. Yeah. Uh, he he weighs three hundred twenty nine pounds with the armor on. Jesus. He's 47 years old. Christ. <laughs> Eye color, gray, skin color, tanned caramel. Oh, he's, he's clearly a Turk. Notable features without the armor. Bulky physique. Scar over the left eye. Very noticeable jawline. Medium length, dull silver hair. Voice actor, Orson Welles. With his unicorn voice. Unicron? <laughs> unicron voice. I thought it was a unicorn. I, I, I'm now imagining Orson Welles doing a unicorn voice, and it is... <laughs> Godly. Modified oh, phallus titanium <laughs> naganata <laughs> with underblade fire caster and fusion reactor inside the butt. Oh, I only just realized that that was its, his equipment, but that sounded really <laughs> dirty. I read that before as well, and I thought the guy was just taking the piss. Alright, so he's got a titanium phallus and he's got no, a fusion a reactor palace. in his it's butt. It's a palace titanium naginata. It's it's like in the picture. It's a fucking long blade that has like yeah, nuclear yeah. reactor for some reason inside. Uh, his uh, battle song is "Devils Never Cry." Devil may cry. <laughs> and uh, his favorite song is uh, "Renegade Head." P. E. I don't know this song. No, neither do I. <laughs> Let's never find out. <clears throat> All right. Personality. <laughs> oh my god! I'm going to enjoy this so much. Hold on. <laughs> I need, he's got, I imagine he's got this really grisly voice like, I am Terminus, and Knight of Endings. But why is a Warhammer 40k character on the Sonic Coaster? I uphold the oaths I've sworn, and when I've done the consecrated phallus titanium plate armor, I gave up my name, and even my very identity. All for the task of rebirthing the legend, for the honor of becoming the rider who heralds the end of an era. Terminus, as he is called, is usually very serious. <laughs> Having been a veteran of many battles, he can come across as a cynic to those he speaks with. This is intentional, for he truly believes that above all else, the responsibilities a man has to his lords, his family, to country, to God, and the very planet itself are absolute. To break these oaths are a grave sin in the eyes of those whom would break such oaths, and responsibilities are less than nothing. As a knight, Terminus does indeed follow his own code of chivalry. To serve faithfully the lords and ladies who, milady, whom he has <laughs> pledged his services to. To provide protection and to aid in the reconstruction of the fiefs he has earned through combat. <laughs> and to mercilessly crush the enemies of those he has pledged to serve. So this guy has like a fife to He's a fucking Sonic liege unit. lord. <laughs> He's like, greetings, peasants. I am here to collect my taxes. So in this dystopian world where there's hedgehogs that go really fast, there's also this guy who has like a fucking titanium-powered Naginata and, you know, rules with an iron fist. I like how he has a code of chivalry, but it's his own code. It's not the usual code, right? It's not the usual combat code. And uh, I don't know why it says to serve faithfully ladies, because, I mean, chivalry is next to nothing to do with women. It basically no, only no. has to have anything to do with how you fight people, men, essentially. Well, yeah, of course. Um, oh, God, my appearance. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 I still, I still, I forgot the last paragraph. Uh, this, yeah, this, this near fanatical belief in one's oaths and responsibilities do override his apathy for the circumstances of others, and at times, he is not without pity. 
On many an occasion, he is known to be a benevolent individual, sometimes offering protection to those who need it, and only asking for food, drink, and a warm place to sleep at night. Okay, so he never asked for those fiefdoms. He was never like, actually, just for a reward, I would really prefer if you just gave me a shit ton of land with some serfs living on it that I can tell to fuck. Well, the thing is, he's like a huge hypocrite, so he acquired those fiefdoms probably for conquest under his lord, and now he's like, oh, but I'm really actually quite humble. Don't worry, I understand humility. Yeah, I have enough fiefdoms now that I, uh, I don't need any more. Make sure you work that field, peasant! <laughs> or else I shall whip you. Alright, his my appearance. To many, I am a faceless entity. Clad in full body, faded grey interlocking plate, ma plate mail armor, made of five centimeter thick consecrated phallus titanium, with a full helm as well, and countless symbols of the Aguila and other holy etchings, runes, and wards. They are not wrong, for Terminus is just the armor. No one needs to know the man behind the armor, nor do I want anyone to know the man behind the armor. That knowledge will make the task of resurrecting the legend all the more difficult to achieve. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe we kind of have to know his identity because he owns a fiefdom, so yeah. he would have to have a deed to the land. They can't really have, like, a deed to phallus to titanium five centimeter thick consecrated arm. <laughs> also, just a question, is his name Terminus? Or is that's the name of his armor, right? So he's just uh, named himself after his armor. Yeah, I guess so. It's like a soldier naming himself Gun. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, it's so, oh shit! He goes straight up. Uh, he goes straight Yoda. <laughs> the next part. Oh my god! When this is going to get described. Oh, so Jesus ready. Christ! How many paragraphs I, is this? <laughs> I am so ready. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Powers? Ha! I do not need such trivial magics. Such things breeds reliance. Reliance begets laziness. Laziness invites stagnation and death. All I need is my armor. My steed Malaboglia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, he does realize, the guy writing this, if you're 329 pounds, you will crush any horse that you ride. No, mate, this, this maybe horse... maybe it's a car. This... <laughs> He just Ride gets in my steed, my four by four Chiralis. <laughs> he just gets into a fucking panda. <laughs> it's just like, oh yes, many underestimate the power of my panda steed Malaboglia. Uh, and my brothers and sisters in arms. Ah, oh, so he's a family man. Yeah. With his faith. He's also highly religious, clearly. Yeah, yeah. Believing in the god emperor, I assume. Yeah, well he's got symbols of the Aguila. <laughs> yeah. He's pretty serious about his craft. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, can confirm, Warhammer 40k does happen in the Sonic universe. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And I would, I would consider that uh, basically Sonic the Hedgehog apostate. Uh, I also know this about the Sonic universe. They have like these things called Chaos Emeralds. That's definitely heresy. Yeah, that's definitely so, heresy. So, from... so Terminus is going to be angry all the time. Yes. Well, clearly, he, he's a fucking liege lord, and he's fucking his serfs are Sonic OC characters. Wouldn't that uh -huh. piss you off? <laughs> like you're like, dudes, you guys really need to pay your taxes. I can run really fast. No, seriously, I... these these taxes. I need to do maintenance on all the, <laughs> all of the fucking walls in the in in my fiefdom. I like the pretty dress, but I won't Did... wear it. <laughs> Do you know how much money it costs to maintain this five centimeter thick armor? I have a nuclear reactor in my blade. Why? Who cares? Okay, not sure. you can skip the next paragraph because it's essentially just a repeat okay. of uh, that quote above. Okay. You can do uh, starting from his armor of choice. His his armor weapon. His armor weapon of choice, a Naganata with a fire caster located under the base of the blade, and a small fusion reactor located inside the butt of the weapon, with the purpose of powering and providing fuel for the weapon's mount <laughs> uh, I think that there's with the weapon's mount dot, however, but 
The weapon's Mantle Weaver has been consecrated and laced with many runic enchantments and protective wards. So remember, I do not need such trifling magics, right? <laughs> but I have wards. Also, runes in Warhammer 40k, because, which is heresy. Because, you know, it offers some protection against the undead. Only some, you know. And well, those with psychic abilities... You know. He never mentioned that he had to fight the undead specifically. <laughs> as far as I know, this guy's just trampling around farm fields, threatening peasants. Like, everyone else is just going fast, and he's, like, slowly lumbering behind them, like, oh, 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 shit. They never mentioned just how heavy this is. Oh. I should be on my pension. In addition, his armor and chainmail is capable of rendering all forms of supernatural phenomena like magic-based attacks and kines uh, kinesis null on contact with the armor. So, oh, wow. I think mentioning the undead and the protection it offers is somewhat negated by the fact that you say it renders all forms of psychological phenomena, right? So, so yeah, supernatural phenomena like protective wars and runic enchantments, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So does it nullify itself? Uh, I don't know. This is this is very meta stuff. Jesus. I I was just hoping this guy would have a nuclear reactor inside everything, and it just says like in fine print he is dying of nuclear poisoning. <laughs> so as far as he sent help, his firecaster and the blade of the Naganata itself has the same supernatural phenomena, <laughs> nullifying capabilities as the armor. The only difference is that the blade of the Naganata has a fifty percent chance to inflict the silence ailment. <laughs> On whoever it strikes <laughs> one term, with each subsequent blow giving it a 40% chance to si for the silence ailment to stack for another turn. Where the oh fuck God. did this come from? <laughs> this is like turn based fight. <laughs> uh, how useful is silence in the Sonic OC? Like, Mom, they won't accept my Warhammer 40k OC. Oh, don't worry, honey. I'm sure they'll accept it in the Sonic OC. Okay. <laughs> uh, this Firecaster Underblade attachment essentially functions like a flamethrower. Only, well, oh, well, that's against the Geneva Convention, isn't it? Well, look at what he says right afterwards. Uh, only powered by a mixture of mana, faith, and blessed oils that just so happen to be highly flammable. <laughs> you know, it's a complete coincidence. He didn't pick and choose, right? I wonder what exact like, if it works like a flamethrower, surely all you need is the oil that has been arbitrarily blessed. And, you know, set it alight. Like, the mana and faith, not really essential, seeing as you have a fucking fusion reactor. Also, mana, supernatural. Mana, faith, supernatural. Yeah, surely he's, like, immune to this. He cannot like, he hear the voice of He starts his flamethrower, and he's like, fuck, it's nullified, but I only have a 50% chance of nullifying <laughs> it, so sometimes a flamethrower works. Unless it doesn't work, then it's silenced, and then if I keep using it, it might get silenced longer. <laughs> That's what I'm getting from this. Said firecaster can be used to clear out rooms, or as a brutal fighting, fight ending tactic. Okay, <laughs> so shit. That's what I like to call using a deodorant so he's, on somebody. So he's talking about breaching mechanics, and how he would <laughs> breach rooms. Oh my god, is this guy like SWAT? This is so legit. Like, so there's a bunch of hedgehogs just fucking chilling in the room. This guy fucking breaks in. With his Naginata, stabs somebody with it, he's like, it has a 50% chance to silence while this hedgehog is gored and dead. And then he's like, it's time to end this fight by burning everyone alive. <laughs> oh. Okay, oh, 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 go on, go on, it's fucking amazing. How oh that God. would work is Terminus <laughs> impaling someone on his Naginata, then pressing down on a small button of sorts to activate it. Thus, burning the opponent alive. Wait, how is it a button of sorts if it's just a fucking button? I've seen a flamethrower. It has a switch. It's, well, I mean, uh, it has a trigger. Yeah, it's, but this one has a button. It's different to a flamethrower. It's a fire yeah, caster, also, dude. Not a flamethrower. Yeah, also, a flamethrower has kind of like two buttons. Yeah, well, yeah. it has a valve. It has one, to, one to open the valve for the gas release and one to spark and ignite, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, they, they don't actually have that much... Uh, time, do, do they? They only work for like 30 seconds or something. Yeah, yeah, the whole point of, uh, of flamethrowers during like the, the, the World War II was that engineers would get really close to the enemy 
and uh, the few people who still use trenches and shit, they would just burn them alive inside yeah, there. Few people. <laughs> it was well. kind of a staying point of military tactics, Alec. <laughs> <laughs> like, bunkers bunkers and trenches weren't, like, they didn't just disappear after World War One. They were like, okay, this shit's still useful, you know? <laughs> it's not like, well, we've seen what they do and how they work in World War One. Let's never use this again. <laughs> Let's just ignore it. Maybe we should go back to horses after all. <laughs> just mount a cannon on a horse. Yeah, sure, the charge of the Light Brigade taught us nothing. <laughs> oh yeah, good times. That good that's times. that's a really fucking meta literature joke. I wonder how many people will get that. If you get that, comment below along with commenting what name we should be using for this new show. <laughs> Guys, trust <laughs> us, we're really serious about this. We we should need like a little mobile phone service on this show. It's like remember to 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 text hashtag #comfort for the chance at winning your own five centimeter thick. Um, interlocking phallus titanium full plate body armor, <laughs> which we will send over send over to your door. Okay, this next section go on, is go fucking on. intense. All right, uh, my skills, the culmination of who I am, who I was, and who I will be. I have devoted my life to the path of the night, from martial arts that I learned as a page, like blacksmithing, armor and weapons maintenance, financing, bartering. Falconry, tracking, hunting, archery, foraging, <laughs> cooking, and etiquette. To the skills of warfare I learned through war and my squirehood. Like strategy, <laughs> politics, speechcraft, terrain advantages and disadvantages, caring for my steed, horseback riding, and even my mastery in the usage of consecrated phallus titanium naginata, I received as a coming of age from my father before the gates of Valhalla opened and the Valkyries guided his eternal soul to the halls of Valor. <laughs> All of these skills and the knowledge imparted to me by many teachers has shaped and groomed me for the oh, role shit. I take today. <laughs> Can't so, read them all out. <laughs> so he is a journey journeyman level blacksmith. He is a master level armor and mate and weapons maintenance. Uh, journey level level financing. So he's a really <laughs> he's he's, so an he's okay. He, he steward. has accountancy skills. So why the fuck is he doing this? Well, you know. As we know before, he does own a fiefdom, so financing and being a, a good steward is very important, you know. I love I love the next one. Expert level bartering. I will take this apple for free. Wait, you should pay for it. Wait, I'm a fucking knight and I can kill you where you stand. Very okay. chivalrous. Jo journeyman level falconry, you know, for those hunting trips. But he never mentioned using a falcon before. But, you know, he's, he likes to have the option. <laughs> And he okay, so he he definitely rides a horse. Yes. So we know that his horse is just crushed. No wonder he never gets anywhere or does anything. Well, I I, I think he's got a horse that is covered in steroids. Not given steroids. <laughs> just you know, it's got all the all the little uh, bottles of pills just hanging from its neck. It's like, yep, yeah, that'll do. We put a fusion reactor inside its butt as well. <laughs> the horse is dead now. A journeyman level tracking, very useful. Expert level foraging. Why? Okay, no, novice level archery. Well, he's never okay. shot anything so far. So why besides a flamethrower? I mean, I would think if you're a knight, you've probably got better archery skills than foraging or tracking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who the fuck is this guy? He's like, he he owns land, but he's just out in the woods, fucking like scouting for berries, I think, eating the wrong berries, th and then just shitting. I think I know what this guy is because just reading ahead, he's got like. Expert level politics and expert level speechcraft. He's a neat, isn't he? No, I know, I know exactly what this guy is. This guy, he's so there used there was a war, right? That his father did very well in, right? He inherited the lands <laughs> from his father, but he was raised in an environment where you know war was not exactly the norm, right? There no, was it was absolutely. a peaceful time. So, you know, he did learn all the blacksmithing and the armor and weapon maintenance and all of that. He spends most of his time just dicking around, hunting, fucking with his falcon out, <laughs> tracking, <laughs> tracking game. And hell, he even sometimes cooks his meal for himself. Well, he said, okay, later on, it just says apprentice level cooking. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, he, he see, this is the thing, because he has so many cooks for himself. But every now and then he just enjoys, you know what? I think I'm going to cook this, this deer steak myself. 
Yeah, he probably uses the flamethrower <laughs> using taxpayer money. That's why he's an Oh my god, that's why he's an apprentice cook! That's <laughs> <laughs> the fucking flamethrower! <laughs> He, he only has that so that he could use the description to say, I cook my enemies alive. <clears throat> well, master level etiquette. What's, what's to be said? Milady. He has demonstrated none of his etiquette. So far, he, he's just basically going all about, it's me, me, me. No, I am a crusader. Remember, remember, he has master level etiquette. So <laughs> before he burns his enemies alive, he lets them draw their weapon. <laughs> Master level steed maintenance. Hmm. Mm. Ah, well. Apprentice level topographical battle strategy. He read Sun Tzu one day. Yeah, he read Sun Tzu, and he read the part where Sun Tzu said, if you have double the troops of them, surround them. <laughs> he read the part which said, if you're fighting in a castle, just fucking give up. <laughs> You'll eventually <laughs> lose. Starve them out. Hope it works. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, Sun Tzu is a, it's, it's a really good book. Yeah, it is. It is, actually. It's fairly, fairly, fairly interesting. When people say, like, Sun Tzu is dumb, he's actually just telling you uh, common sense. Yeah. Because he's telling you not to actually engage in all this chivalry bullcrap. You shouldn't be engaging in equal numbers. Yeah, never. And you should be keeping stuff to skirmishes. And the main fact is that war is not for the sake of war. War has to be weighed against the uh, economic costs of waging that war. Yeah. It's all so about the opportunity. Have... Yes, absolutely. So when two nations are actually equally equally strong, he, he basically says, don't start a war. I think it was actually Sun Tzu who said it was a, an uneasy peace. It is better than an ideological war. Yes. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. Sounds kind of Confucius. Maybe. Man, uh, sh confuss man shit on toilet. <laughs> Oh no, wait, that was, that's the wrong one. Shit, I fucked it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> god damn it! Oh my god, you should read his weaknesses because he's so humble now. Weaknesses. It's such a hard thing to admit one's own faults. <laughs> Even more so to make an honest effort to fix your weaknesses. Even in the roles I must fill, I only worry that my imperfections will cause me to fall short of the expectations and the legend I am tasked with rebirthing. Talks a lot about rebirthing this legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think he may have had a bad relationship with his mother. It's, it's. She's never mentioned. Only his father. That's true. Women, yeah, women that, that's, don't. That's an indic Women don't matter, milady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he only mentioned ladies once. That's true. This armor is not without its flaws. It is cumbersome and heavy. <laughs> Sometimes my horse's brack needs reconstructive surgery. <laughs> Fast-moving targets and those at range are a hassle to take down. <laughs> really? <laughs> maybe, maybe because you have a fucking nuclear-powered uh, Najanata, you can get a gun. Nah, mate. Nah, mate. It's that novice-level archery. That's the problem. Because this is, this is a world... Keep in mind, this is a world where it's actually modern times. So his fiefdom is he busts into somebody's apartment and he asks them, Where's the rent? <laughs> Another thing I have to worry about is the environment during times of bad seasons <laughs> and other such maladies. He created through a natural source can still boil me alive. And electricity through a natural source can still electrocute me. <laughs> Another vulnerability is the threat of arrows or small blades piercing through the slits of my visor and armor. Beyond that, I am only human. The thing is, that is the most serious one. But I have ever, uh, I've ever found on this. I site, mean, how does right? it go further than this? Yeah, everything from here is a little bit more tame. Yo! Alec, Alec, I really want to read *Race of the Raccoon*. Well, taking me here was crucial, wasn't it? Jesus Christ, this sarcastic this... piece of shit. Fuck this guy. It's not like he pisses people off, he's just genuinely insufferable. And you know what? I, I know that this is exactly how the, the writer acts in real life. Yeah. This, this is the snarky piece of shit who wonders why his parents don't have him in his inheritance. Hey, when you're a pessimist, you're either right or you have a pleasant surprise. 
<laughs> oh my god. You know what? I bet his, his mom brings him dinner every night, and then she, just before she leaves, she's like, I should have swallowed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Fucking hell. I wouldn't want to die without having experiments sexually with both men and women. Well, you know what, Morrison? I'm going to put opinions to you right now. And I'm going to put opinions right into this show. If you're a man, and you uh, sexually are attracted to other men, typically, that's because you're too ugly for women. <laughs> I, I'm serious. Because of all the homosexuals that I've met, uh, the ones who were private about it, they were actually quite handsome. Uh, Morrison, you you know Mr. Peverin from the Ish. Yes. He's, yes. he's pretty fucking built. I'd, he's I'd suck his cock. Morrison! <laughs> <laughs> when he found out that Kai was gay, he was skeptical about it at first and took away his food. But then he <laughs> talked to Kai about it and he became more accepting of his sexual orientation. Ho! Oh. Ho! Oh. Yeah, I I really don't know what's going on. Okay, that picture. Okay, he's got he's got a look in his eyes that worries me. Okay, uh, so this is the last one. You can you can ah. you can do the honors. Uh, Thaddy is the king of the east side of the Nega world. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, read the fucking biography. Oh, you are is getting... a merciful, kind king with a heart of gold. It. If one of his guards is pregnant, he will let them rest until they give birth. <laughs> if one of his guards is hurt, he will take care of them. As a prince, Thaddy tried to make peace with the shadows, but in return, he got mocked and beat up by shadow guards. Once he was king, Thaddy concentrated on matters that he could actually change. He respected his guards and made peace with the Solars and helped them fight against the shadows. He has two sons, Flicker, oldest, and Candle, youngest. What? And then there's a whole section for love life. Oh. Well, enjoy. Enjoy. This, this is, this is the, the peak. Uh, when Thaddeus was still a prince, his parents wanted him to have a mate, but the mate they chose him was mean to him, so he went away to look for a mate. He, as if, like he had a fucking choice. Yeah, that's not, that's not exactly how a uh, yeah, well, prince ship works. We're talking works. about, you know... Um, Dip yeah, tactical diplomatic unions. Yeah. You don't just fucking marry for love, you little shit. So selfish. Yeah, right, right, right. All right, he yeah. fell in love with a girl named Miranda that he was friends with for seven years and wanted her as a mate. Uh, once they were adults, he married Miranda and mated with her. Uh, <laughs> the first two tries were miscarriages. <laughs> But the third try, she gave birth to their son, Flicker. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's pretty intense. Oh my god, it gets Go worse. Afterwards, on. Miranda started coughing up a lot of blood. The royal doctors tried to save her, but she died three hours later. This is why you don't leave your healthcare in the hands of fucking hedgehogs and you invest <laughs> into proper healthcare. I, I, I will invite you uh, to basically understand that this is a modern world and they could just go to a hospital if they want to. Yeah. Right, go on. Thaddy was never told that Miranda had a rare disease that kills the mother slash father after birthing what? a child. <laughs> but how does a father die? How? How? <laughs> what kind of disease does when, that? When the child is born, it goes straight back to its birthplace, so it tries and burrows into the, the father's cock. I, I don't know, it's like, it's like the disease just blasts out and into like the dad's dick and kills him. <laughs> Fucking shreds it like a banana. What? what? Also, he's such a good father after yeah, that. Yeah, that yeah, A was heartbroken. He cared for Flicker, but he missed Miranda terribly. So he sent Flicker away to live in the forest while he was still a baby. You know. I love you, son. But you know what? The disease killed my my wife, you piece of shit. And apparently it was meant to kill me. So why is he still alive? Because he says it's a disease that kills the mother father after birthing a child. But a father can't give birth. But he was just very lucky. He managed to get out of the way before uh, before the fetus <laughs> shot, yeah, he managed, shot up his cock. He managed he managed to get out of uh, being pregnant, so he's very lucky in that sense. Many years later, an old friend of Thaddeus visited him. His name was Raoul. 
and Raoul had a crush on him since they were teenagers. He talked to him for a while, and when things got steamy, he led Raoul upstairs with him, and they mated in Thad's room. Raoul got Thaddy pregnant. What? What? Oh, okay. What? 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 Oh. What? Oh. Okay. okay, maybe I understood why that disease may have been a little bit bad. Well, they never explained that. So is Thaddy, like... A hermaphrodite? I guess so. It, well, it, what is going on here? I didn't read that he, part. He, I, I, I just... I mean, how... D There's no indication of this. He's a king. <laughs> so he's he identifies as a male, but he can still give birth. So, so like, when he was a prince, maybe he just didn't want to mate with her because he'd have to, like, carry the baby or some shit because she, she was, like, the, the dominant one. Yeah, shit. All of a sudden, this has become oh. a lot more interesting. Wow. Jesus. Oh. So, he got oh. pregnant, and he gave birth to a healthy baby boy, so he's better than Miranda. So, he, so he didn't have a disease? No, clearly not. Oh, okay, well, only, okay, only Miranda had the disease. He was fine. Fuck Miranda. Jesus, Miranda was just shit at pregnancy, even though she, she yeah. is the girl. She should have the dominant uteral genes. We're not going to read uh, Raoul's bio. I'm just going to show you Raoul's picture, and we'll close with that. Ah! Oh! Uh, okay, that was a delayed... Uh... <laughs> ah! What? Raoul has a Jamaican accent. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. Well, that. What, what do you think, Morrison? Oh, I can't actually use the real name. Uh, Fuck. Morrison is fine. Shit. Just, just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody will find I out mean, our identities or our postal codes or where I, we live within <laughs> Europe. Uh, we could just. We should call ourselves by our screen names. So Seth the yeah, Attach. But... Oh, shut the fuck up! Call me <laughs> Seth. <laughs> 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 sounded so serious. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs>